Right, so... So, quickly from the ground, just to show you how we, how we started. I have the track I have set this time. Right. Okay. Right, there it is. Yeah, much better. Alright, because the problem of the lantern is the switches. So, the switch to turn it on is this one. So, how, how do you make sure it's on the aircraft? Um, usual uh, ground crew, remote review, and you select the lantern on pod 8B. It just goes on 8B. Okay. It doesn't go anywhere else. Okay. So you can set whatever you want. If you set the lantern, uh, it will pop up. So basically, what they did is they made sure that the buses were uh, you know, compatible, the interface, they managed to interface it, and they just took a joystick, they just chuck it there, uh, move the encryption panel down below, and that's pretty much it. That's it. They just chuck it there. So this joystick doesn't move at all, but it provides you an, uh, the add switches and stuff, which is kind of an interesting solution. It works. Uh, so the problem is, how do you turn it on? Because this switch, normally, you don't see it. This one that I'm operating at the moment, because probably on Discord you don't see my cursor. I, do, I don't see a cursor, I see the switch. Okay. You switch it to pod and basically that's pretty which, um, which aircraft did you jump in, by the way? Uh, the ground one at the moment. It's just a simple uh, off. Well, just to oh, show it's you really noisy switches. when you go in. Oh no, it's really noisy in mine. Hold on. <coughs> All right, carry on. It's not noisy anymore. Uh, well, no, that's just but just just that. It's just that if I spawn on an aircraft that is flying and I start switching the switch, switching the switch, toggling the switch, um, the pod basically disconnects, just turns off. The problem with the lantern is that it takes eight minutes to warm up ish. Maybe maybe a, a bit less, but still quite a long time. To the point that I decided to chuck it in the cross checks. Uh, um, what is it? Nibor page. So I imagine in real life you would turn it on. I don't know a defense scene or something like that. But since the startup of the anti works in two steps, so the first one is warming up, then it goes on standby from, from then from standby to operative. Uh, I decided to put it in the actually on the ground right before taxing, so you know that whenever you need it, maybe you're scrambling, whatever you need it is ready. Otherwise, and it doesn't it have cooling; it runs out of anything to worry like that. Once it's on, up and running, it stays up and running. Uh, as far as I know, yeah. So in real life, uh, um, I read that if you fly above twenty-five thousand feet, it just literally as it catches so fire, it goes on blows fire, up. Yeah, yeah that's weird stuff. In DCS, doesn't, but still. So what I do is... Okay, we can go above 25,000 even though... Yeah, yeah, we can. We can. Right. So we switch it to operative, then this... Is that left or right click? Because I can't actually see it. Uh, right, uh, to, all to the to the right, so right click. Using what though? Which mouse button? Because I don't know which way it's moving on mine. You don't Stop see it? No, because I can't go far. I'm not in track IR, so I, I'm just ah, right. in... So just click fully, fully right, right, right click. Right click. Yeah. Okay. And um, by the way, although I haven't powered up my aircraft, is your have you got ground power and everything? No, on? no, nothing, nothing. Well, just to show you the switch, because normally right. it is this is if you're looking at the stream at the moment, that's where the switch is. Yeah, so you have the end rest there. That's what. Yeah, that's switch. what I've got. Yeah. Yeah. So I decided to just plug in the Takaya this time rather than yesterday I didn't. So you can actually see the switch. So you turn it to upper, which is the last uh, side to pod, and. Um, well, that's pretty much it. You just have to wait for the mode uh, button to light up until it gets to standby, and then just Which press it. Which the mode button? Uh, on the right of the power switch. Oh, see it, see it, yeah. Is mode. And later when we fly, we'll see that probably is already in, op in uh, operative. Um, I think it's totally dark until it gets on standby step, which is the longest step, like a few minutes. Then you press it 40 seconds, 50 seconds later, you can actually use it. Okay. Uh, the only thing you need to do later is arming the laser. Yeah. Which is uh, one. pretty intuitive. And uh, the video. I'm presumably, arming the laser just makes the laser available, right? Yeah. There's another button to fire it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you have the video. Uh, now it's off because we don't have power. So. Uh, it, it, this is so stupid. Why just don't turn the power on? Chief, turn on the ground power. Uh, supply.
We got it. Really? Yeah, there it is. Alright, so let me kill the Rakai, otherwise it keeps moving. Alright, there. So the mod switch, you probably see the label popping up now. This is totally off. It will become. We we'll, we'll switch to standby later when it's ready. It looks like you've got one button lit. Oh, your laser's armed. That's yeah, fine. laser. Then the video is basically changes what is the um, displayed on the TCS. So TCS or FLIR. TCS FLIR. So how does it work? Um, on the TID you have the uh, mode. Switch it to TV. Now it's off. Um, if TCS is selected, then uh, you will see the TCS. If FLIR is selected uh, back here, then you will see the FLIR. You see nothing now because it's not warmed up. Because the screen's not warmed up, yeah. yeah. And that's pretty much it. So, something useful that I find quite... Uh, and uh, do you still have to turn on cooling for the radar and the missiles behind it somewhere? So, air to ground uses the O9, yeah. So, yeah, it's something so, that... So, yeah, do. so behind that, you've got to get in behind that thing and flip the switch. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Yeah, almost there. There it is. Cool. Yeah, there it is. Is it... Left or right click to go forward? Uh, forward is uh, left, uh, right click. Okay. This is Org 9 uh, plus uh, M54. Or you flip it back, just uh, if you don't have the Phoenix one. But I haven't seen any difference. I don't know how and if it's implemented. And basically that's pretty much it. Everything else is assigned in the controls. Okay. So. I'm using the Virpil uh, T50, so I have the point of view, classical, you know, Russian style point of view, and I use it for this loop. So left, okay. right, use this stuff. Then I have uh, two more ads. One is so that that drives your yeah. Your this thing is just around. moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this while uh, I'm talking. Is a four-way switch, so you can go like bottom left. You just have to go left and uh, you know down. Uh, and so on. No big deal most of the time. Uh, mm. Next, uh, there is the S. Lantern uh, slew. You found it? Okay. Lantern, yeah, slew. Let me know when you're ready. So carry Give on. me a sec. Yeah, no time. No, no time. No worries. It's too early. Do you, um, so do you, do, for your hand control unit, do you use the same joystick or do you have two joysticks? No, I use the same joystick. I have. So I when you're using Lantern, do you have a, a modifier? No. Uh, and control unit, I have everything on my panel except for the trigger. The trigger works as um, a... Uh, okay, so you don't need to double up those controls, because nope. I'm pretty sure... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm using it. Yeah, I am using everything already. Okay, I'm going to have to think about this. So you just keep talking through. I, I, won't, I won't try and keep up with setting it up, because I don't know quite how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, well, I'm recording it uh, as well, uh, so maybe you can... Watch it back later. Yeah. True. So anyway, salut. They have another hat for the S4. This is like a sensor, the sensor switch on the area, something like that. Basically, it's a multifunction switch depending on the situation. The problem is that it's a five-way switch. I don't have any five uh, because it has the four directions plus the push. And this this one on my joystick doesn't have it, so I have four ways plus the press on a separated button. I use the third hat switch instead for the point track, area track, and then to switch between the waypoints. Okay. Uh, so these are all needed at the moment. And maybe the press doesn't really is not really needed at the moment because it's the la auto laser never use it. I prefer to have control myself. And the declutter, yeah, is good, but it's not. So it's not really fundamental. If you're really short on buttons, no, it's not a big deal. Uh, you have the f uh, field of view, the zoom. The zoom is not digit. Um, sorry, not uh, what do you call it? It's not a physical uh, lens that changes. It's like zooming in a it just Microsoft Paint. It takes a smaller part of the overall picture. Yeah, yeah. So, so it doesn't. Yeah. The definition just really goes down a lot. It's not really. It's not really. In, I mean, think about how old this thing is. It's not li like the sniper pod or uh, the lightning two on the A10. Right. Then I have a separate button for the full action. The full action uh, triggers the laser and also saves the points that you're designated. So uh, the Lantern has uh, the, the, the possibility of saving one uh, position, just one. 
everything else here you need to do the landing on a waypoint or something like that. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, and if the, if, when you store a position from the lantern, does that go into, into you know, is that visible on the TID and stuff as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're using the TID all the time. But yeah, but as in when you look at the TID in the normal air-to-air -air mode, ah, the lantern, no, no queue, will you see that no waypoint on that? No. Okay. So what they did is basically took the old lantern thing, they, they just basically bolt uh, the lantern on the bottom of the aircraft, placed the joystick there, kind of created an interface, and you yeah, just use the TID as a TV screen, basically. That's all, uh, that's all, basically. In fact, the Lantin has a GPS, and it would be amazing if the GPS of the Lantin could be interfaced with the INS to update it automatically. No, it doesn't work like that. So what you can do, for example, is using the GPS from the Lantin to update your INS. I used to do that, then I just resigned, uh, decided to use the INS 430. But it's a possibility. Um, then you have white dot, red dot. Not really... Not really needed. I mean, you can use it, but it's not really fundamental if you're very short on buttons. And designate and never use it, basically. And then, on the pedal, I have the half action. Oh, where is it? Wait. Why well, is it not working? Interesting. My pedal is not working. Uh, stand by. Why is it not picking up? Maybe just a bug or something. Um, the I, I I have it on the pedal because basically I can hold it with me my, my pinky fee, with a little finger, and I can use the rest of the hand to operate something else. If I need to laze and move for whatever reason, I can do that. And the half section half okay. action doesn't create a waypoint, so if you need to hasty laze something whatever reason, not really per SOP, but if you need if you need it, you can do that with the half action. Okay. Yeah, I'm going very fast now. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Well, I want to see it in action. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not really complicated on uh, anything. Uh, no, no, no. I could have just changed these a lot. Yeah, pilot air now, yeah? Yeah. So switch back to the back seat. Now, so we have the lantern. Now it's a bit different because it's, uh, it's already on. Mode is on upper rather than standby, so it's already okay. Laser is armed as well. Video is on TCS, so you have to click it and switch to FLIR. Then you go on the TID, you switch it to TV, and you're pretty much set. That's pretty okay. all, all you need. Uh, something I forgot to mention is the air to ground mode because technically the lantern. Uh, should can be used as the air to navigation as well. I think that that part has been removed from uh, the, the implementation on the F-14, but anyway. Uh, the problem is that you don't see the cursor at the moment, but if you go see the L on the bottom uh, yeah. lowest part, yeah, on the close to like a centimeter to the left, there's an A slash A. Yeah. That's because in air to ground mode. So to do air to ground mode, you need to switch to air to ground mode. And in the pilot. Yeah. I bound it somewhere. There is. Now I'm in air to ground mode. I never use it in air to ground to be honest at the moment. Um, so far. So, uh, very easy uh, mission here. You can see, if you're looking at my screen, you see. Oh, that it hasn't an changed in the back. What do you mean? Well, I jumped to the front to change it to air to ground, and it's still saying no, air no, to ground. No, no, it's air not air the radar. It's the um, mode of the lantern. Oh, where'd, oh, where'd you change that? Uh, you need to assign a button. Or s another switch. I forgot to mention, so well. Oh, so it's no, there's nowhere in the cockpit I can change it? Uh, no, it's a button on the lantern uh, thingy. You have the navi navigational air to air or the air to ground. Ah, uh, but then empty. Uh, there's a toggle as well, so you can just set one, one button and that's it. Okay, I'm gonna need to do that. Right, let me know then when you're ready. Okay, one sec. Sure. Okay, I'm ready. This is interesting. Why is my 
paddle not working. Unless I sign it to something else. Anyway, uh, I'll check it later. Uh, so, uh, the lantern, you can see it here, just goes on this pylon here, has two quick modes, uh, which are that one. So, do you see the that it's moving at the moment? It's very slightly. I can't see the lantern moving now. Okay, so look at it. Okay, moving now. Okay, because the lantern can be slewed basically both sighted, 12 o'clock, or a few degrees uh, uh, lower. This is very helpful um, when the pilot sees something. So you see something, I slew the target, like for example the lantern to the both sided way, you point the nose there and I can capture the, the position. So let's say you see the missile you know, coming up for a SAM or something like that, you quickly point the nose there, I lock this, the position, and then we turn defensive. Later on we can re-engage and the position will be saved, so we can engage that point. See that he's moving. These are these two ways are preset, and they're somewhere on the lantern controller as well, are they? Uh, yeah. This is the S4 uh, toggle. See that he's moving. This is basically uh, Q add. You see on the bottom Q add. This is the add way. This is basically both sighted, and this is a bit lower. What does SNO stand for? Sorry. I'm wondering what SNO stands for, Sierra Nevada and Baroska. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. No else? Okay. Uh, and then on the manual it says how many degrees is uh, is lewd, but you know, it's just something that is pretty handy when you know when you know that there is there. Right. So most of the time, how do you use it? You just create a waypoint. At the moment, we have this is the scenario. There's a base with a Shilka moving and two ground targets. I created a waypoint there. Let me see if I can show. Alright, oh, there it is. So what I do normally is create a waypoint in the area um, where the targets are. It can be the keyhole or it can be the target coordinates given coming coming from the nine liner. Something like that. Then you press the uh I'll show you the keys as well so you know them. Lantern uh, QWP up and um, plus and minus. So this, so this is waypoint increment, right? Exactly, plus and minus. At the moment there is just one. So when, as soon as I, I push it, down. goes there. And okay. it's pretty easy because it goes there. And again, if this is the, these are the coordinates of the target, you can see them immediately. Bottom left corner, you have all the information about the aircraft. So our lat long, that's why it can be used for the INS. Our altitude. Uh, I mean bottom right. Bottom left. Uh, sorry, top left. Top left. Okay. Top left. Sorry about that. Um, so this is the aircraft. Bottom right is the target. If you're right, not sure, right. if you uh, forget, you can see TTG. He says time to target. Then yeah, you have well, uh, the altitude probably gives it away. Yeah, elevation, lat long coordinates, <laughs> and whatever you want. So you can actually work yeah. as an uh, AFAC. Uh, so as well. what's the second row? Is that zero nine zero from you? That bearing, tr magnetic bearing from you. That should you? be. Distance and bearing, I don't remember. Let me unpause and see how it changes. Yeah, it's the distance on the right. And and bearing um, on the left. That should be the, the adding, yeah. And you have the elevation then. The, the, uh, what else? You have the laser code on the bottom, M1688. Then on the can left. Can you change that? Yeah, we can. Uh, we can okay, so problem. Bombs, uh, laser code can be, change, can be changed just on the ground. Okay. Meaning you have to do it before. L the lantern is instead you can change it anytime. Uh, you need show you I'll show you all the buttons all the time. Okay. Ah, uh, why I did that? Somebody. Sorry about that. I'm eating myself. I got this a quick thing. Right. Uh, TCS. Right. So to the waypoint. Um, just controls. It's still in air to air, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna change it later. Okay, this is uh, slider, uh, laser focus, or HG, MGC. Uh, MGC. Uh, all the sub. Uh, so, is that an analog controller, this slider? This is a two way. I'm, I'm using a two way switch for this, this one. Okay. This is slider. Um, it's up to you what, what you wanna use. What's AGC, MGC stand for? Um, 
automatic gain, I don't remember. So all what this, is it? most of this stuff, I, I don't, never use them because I t I tested them. And I said, yeah, all right, interesting, but another day I'm not gonna use them. I prefer manual control all the time. Same reason why I don't use the presets on the radio whenever I can. I rather to see the actual frequency. I don't know, it's just me. All the details of this sub function you can find them on the manual anyway. I mean, we can have a look quickly look if you want. Hey, GC, GC. Not worry. Right, it takes a sec. Um, in my bookmark, I have the F14 manual all the time. How's it called again? AGC, MGC. AGC. So, Lantern, controls and display. Uh, yeah, automatic game control and manual game control, yeah. Uh, basically never use them. Uh, so, right. to change those, you need to push the slider forward, and then you use the S4 uh, switch to change the laser code. The S4 is like a, I don't know, like a utility button that does a lot of different things depending on which mode you're in. S4? Uh, yeah. Sure well, sorry. It's this one. S4 at. Five way switch that basically does a lot of things. So, for, in this case, for uh, example, okay. is the uh, DD2 Q add is the one of the modes that I showed you before. You can yeah. change the gain and you can change the code. The other one does the other thing, the opposite. So, uh, you can change the. Um, the it's called the co the code you decrease the code and with the sides instead left and right you switch between the digits of the code. It's it's so easy when you try it because it's, it's actually harder to explain it rather than doing it because it's just yeah you know, I can see how it works. You move, so. move left how and do right. You, how do you say done? Uh, switch uh, slider forward again. I mean forward in my case, but slider again. Okay. And that's pretty much it. In uh, is a toggle basically enters the function. You change the code whenever you need it, and then you just go off. Uh, now in man uh, the auto gain uh, is this one. See auto gain, manual gain. It's switching on the left. Um, then bottom left you have timers. You have the azimuth stuff like that. Oh well, yeah, that's not going to too much into these details at the moment. Then you have the white hot or black hot. Well, that's pretty much it. As you can see, the zoom is pretty awful. I mean, we are at the moment... Yeah, but it does add something. It is worth having. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But it's not really that amazing. So, yeah. understanding what is what, most of the time, is not even that easy. Well, what, you're still 30 miles away. Maybe 40 miles away. Yeah, but you can hardly ID a tank from 70 miles. How many miles? Seven eight miles, you don't see the details of the tank anyway. We're gonna overfly the Shilka, for example. Uh, okay. So the weird shape that you see is the masking, because the the lantern uh, is here on the left. Sorry, on the right of the plane, um, in the left on this point of view, and of course you have all the body of the, the fuselage that is uh, masking all the left side. Yeah. So uh, your job is basically keeping the the rectangular shape that you see now is under the 0 and 0, the top part of the um, of the display, keeping it into the, the this shape basically. Especially when you're orbiting, can be not complicated, but I mean, something that you you have to get used to. So as you can see, at the moment there's nothing selected. The um, it's just going, the, the the pod is going. So what you can do is switch to area mode. Uh, no, we're too far yet. Or point mode in order to stop, to stop the lantern from uh, keep moving. So area and point mode, yeah, same in the TGP. Yeah, I guess it's very similar. I never use the A10, uh, the TGP on the A10. I use it on the area. Very similar. Let me speed up a bit because the one is not. We'll never get there. So 
So anyway, uh, as you can see, the definition is not really great, and the problem is that, for example, what is this thing I'm looking at at the moment? I have no really idea. Uh, this one that is that is moving on the top left. Uh, I know that it's moving because I said it there is a shield card that is moving, but technically you don't even realize that it's moving. Yeah. Uh, probably you see when you are when you this, the lantern stops moving, but otherwise, and the fact that the flare is not really well implemented doesn't really help at all, because these are bushes. I mean, the sea is basically boiling, <laughs> because we are in white hot mode and look, look at the sea, so it's not really yeah. great. But you, yeah, it's pretty decent anyway. So we need a lot of SA, especially from the briefing. In this case, I know that we are we have two targets parked, two bombers SU-24 parked in the ramp where I'm looking at the moment. And then there's a shield car moving around here, which should be that one. Come on, can you just stop it at some point? Anyway, uh, this is normally what I do. Uh, you can see that thing's moving now. Yeah. At the moment, I'm as the waypoint, so the landing to the waypoint. As you can see, under. Uh, ah, silly me. I was in air to air mode, that's why it wasn't working. Mm. Dumb. Um, as you can see, under the AG, you have waypoint one. Yeah. So what I do most of the time is getting the landlock coordinates of the area, and then I move around. Okay, silly me. Now I'm in area mode, and I can switch to point mode. Let me see if I can get this one. Nah, it's too far. So definition again is pretty bad. So you you can basically you can even tell that there are some bombers there. Yeah. Uh, so, and the implementation of the flare at the moment doesn't really help at all. But anyway, so when you're happy, you just slew the lantern, certain position, you press the full action, and you have the uh, release queue coming up. Stop for a sec. So, on the top, you have the steering. Because the pilot have no idea what's going on, so he has no no cues on the. No, arm, well, he can can he repeat this on his tid? Is he get this if he goes tid repeat? He or can, TCS? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. If you go, it'll be on the TCS. There, there you go. Okay, cool. So he can see. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you can see, but you have nothing on the other. So that's the problem. So I will be in F2 ground mode. Master I'm on. And that's pretty much it. Basically, the pilot have no indication he should go and fly following this queue here, which is not really amazing, especially in VR, I guess. From the rear point of view, instead, you can push it to manual. So wait, go back to. Yep. Go back to some view of the TGP uh, or the lantern. So he's it. The, he's follows the carrot, right? So it's saying fly zero nine zero. So CR zero zero one. Yeah. Okay. This is how off, uh, um, how off from the actual correct uh, line. And what's and what's the, what's the line calculated on? Which weapon you've selected? So, is it a weapon delivery parameter or? Yeah, yeah depending on what I selected. At the moment, I have nothing selected. And the only thing you could have is either a laser, you know, um, a GBU or or dumb bombs, right? Um. Yeah. The GBU is the only one accepted, I think. When you select them, you actually see them coming on the bottom of the lantern, which weapon you have selected. Um, but you can use them, for example, for the market. I, so I realized that the market E2 works fairly well, anyway, uh, with this mode, if you select GBUs. Market E3s for the GBU-16, etc. The ballistic coefficient is fairly similar. I mean, it's a dumb bomb anyway, it's not your, that you're gonna, you know, deliver them from 40,000 feet and expected them to, you know, hit the proper target anyway. So it's, it's pretty much okay most of the time. Um, again, the problem for the pilot is that he has no indication on the other, there's nothing at all here. You have the waypoint that's coming up, but just because it, there's a waypoint there. And uh, nothing else. So Yeah, so the pilot has to use, has to use the, the lantern uh, yeah. repeater to s just yeah. see what's going on here. Uh, so back to the pilot, uh, to the, the rear. Uh, you can select everything as usual. You can select single pairs, whatever you need. Normally it's a GBU, so you just select one. I'm in market E2 at the moment, and in fact, I just uh, 
Okay. You have nothing coming up. If you select the GBU... Where's the GBU? Okay, now they're coming up. See, the, the queues are changing now. GBU 10. Show me again. Uh, have a look at the TAD. Oh, yeah. So You're getting a release queue. Because now it's calculating the impact point depending on the weapon. And on the bottom, you see, actually see also the bottoms of the weapons. Well, and what are you changing? I can't see anything changing on the screen, apart from the, what's happening it's in there. Is this thing here? Oh, uh, okay. Is the weapon right, type. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, when you select GBU-12, now on the bottom of the um, lantern, you see GBU-12, right above the laser code. Yeah. Um, if you select something else, it doesn't work. I mean, you don't, you don't see it. So it works with the GBU. As far as I know, I haven't actually tested anything else. But normally with the uh, marker, whatever, it doesn't work. It works for GBU 10, GBU 24, GBU 16, GBU 12. Yeah, because it's the only thing that has a laser yeah. component to it. You can technically, you can do body lasing for anything else though, because it's just a laser beam. So you can actually have someone delivering a Maverick on a position that you're lasing to. No one says that you can't. Roger, know. Roger. Right, Although so having said, but slightly an A10 or an, F, an F18 will have a better, has a better implementation, right? Uh, More range. Uh, yeah, range is not really the problem. The problem is the definition. So if you know that the target is there, you can slow it there, and that's it. The problem is that we cannot pick up uh, other people's laser. Okay. So what I what I did, especially with entropy, when we tested this, uh, was doing. Uh, manual delivery as f at first, but wasn't wasn't accurate enough. Manual complete manual delivery following the NATOPS, uh, you know, ballistic trajectory, or just doing basically a, uh, a normal delivery without lasing. So I create a waypoint over the target coordinates because the TGP on the A10 gives you the coordinates. So I create a waypoint there, slew the lantern there, and then we just do a delivery following the cues. But when we deliver, we don't trigger our laser. We just let other people la people's laser. Uh, you know, controlling the trajectory of the bomb. And it works. It works very well. Because we oh. cannot pick up other people's laser. Roger. So, yeah, there's not much to do. Uh, no GB12 uh, single one. It's just select the... Ah, there is. Uh, the ground settings. This is where you change the code. Um, the code is not... Like, 1111 doesn't work, for example. I think it starts from 105,000. 1,500, I think. Why has he shut, shut down his engines? Sorry? Your pilot's just shut down, it sounds like. Mm, what do you mean? No, it should be fine. Your engine sounds all disappearing. Is that what's happening in mine? Well, I'm in no. active pause, so it sounds a bit weird anyway. Probably okay. it's for that reason. Anyway, you okay. have to select the pylons. And it's pretty much it. Uh, mechanical fuse is on. Single delivery. Everything else is set. Uh, that's it. And always put the always. I try to remember to put the attack mode in manual because you can have the um, pilot having the IP or target queue in the front, but it's just misleading in my opinion. So what was the point of having a CCIP queue there on the ad? No, you don't see it because you have peri eye, but it can be misleading. So I just set it to manual. It's like a even more. Uh, I mean, just look at the. Land here, you know, because you have nothing on the other. Yeah, and just watch the, the release queue drop down on the right hand side, I take it. Yeah, and uh, basically that's pretty much it. Let me just check if I've set the bomb. Yeah, still release. So I'm a awful pilot. My joystick is not, is in a weird position at the moment. I don't have a throttle, so I'll try to do the delivery, but I probably will go very well. Okay, thank oh. you. <laughs> the, nah, it's normally <laughs> a bug with the active pose. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, they haven't fixed it yet. Well, I just cheat and... So if I come bit. out of exit pause, I'm going to go into a massive climb? Not all the time. I, um, I noticed that is the trim basically gets yeah, over-trimmed. Yeah, it gets over-trimmed. It's a bug with the active pause that is at the moment. It's not a big deal, because not most of the time, you don't... If you're doing something with the active pause, you don't... You, don't, you just stay in active pause all the time, and that's it. So, something that I need to do is... Disable this guy. Alright, so here, back to GBU. So this this probably shows you how fast he's setting it up anyway. Now we have to ground mode. Let's do to the waypoint. 
and we're already set. Takes 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, let's see if I can get the Sheikah moving. So, normally I always keep it in area mode until I find something. This is too far now. Um, so, the Lantin has a point uh, release uh, as the A10 and more modern pods have. Uh, it's pretty easy. Just go in point mode and uh, just follow the cues again. So the bomb, the laser will automatically follow the target. Otherwise, if you think about, you know, changing the laser manually gets a bit... Nah. There's a dedicated mode for that, is the point mode. It's much better. Uh, you can also declutter if you want, just to have a look around. If you are short on buttons, don't even set that one. This is the S4, uh, the press. So uh, declutter just takes everything off? Um, must have oh no, the time. sequence sheet. Okay, sequence yeah. Alright. Never used it, but you know, you never know. Yeah. So now we need to find. Does that really help? Ah, oh, there it is. See, the definition of it is not really. So, what I do is uh, pressing the um, full action to save the position. I don't know why my pedal is not working, I have to look later. And we just follow the cues now. Right, back to the pilot. Don't do anything weird, please. So, we need air to ground. Well, you know this part better than me, definitely. TD. Do I need to sell anything else? No, we're pretty happy, I guess. As long as you've got a stores release button? Uh, I should. I hope. Can you not release bombs from the back, then? What do you mean? Ah, uh, no. No. Because in this scenario, it makes it would make sense for the rear to drop in. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy if the pilot does it, it's not really a big deal. Okay, when do you hold the stores button down? Well, see oh. on the right. Oh. Are you already holding it down? No, no, not yet. No, no, if you if you press it, it goes. You have a trigger. If I didn't okay, forget so. anything... Alright, still off. Okay. And the bomb is going. Time to target is 20 seconds, when in, uh, is at 15. Okay, now, now the point more that works as well. And now I start lasing. You lasered at 15, did you? Yeah, I think there are some parameters. Uh, you should ask uh, Neck, probably. In the A10, you would laser about 8 seconds. Ah, yeah, I don't know, I just basically made it up. Because I see that some people start to lasing immediately, but it doesn't work if you lase immediately, because you just, the, the bomb test, no, follow some weird, uh, weird. Uh, good shit, good hit. Uh, trajectory and wastes a lot of energy. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty, pretty easy. That's pretty cool, man. Thanks a lot, dude. Anyways, so there are some sub functions like the automatic gain and uh, stuff like that, but 99% of the time you just use the S4. You create a, so you create a waypoint over something. So the, uh, the again, the waypoint is still there. And yeah. Actually, uh, you the point that you saved, you can get it back by using the S4 switch to the right. Okay, so that's not a. So a sequential um, waypoints no. thing anymore. It's a separate, it's a exactly. separate stored position. And how well, how good is it at doing moving targets? Mm, let's see. Uh, I did with entropy a couple of tests. Let me see if I can get the this shield. Uh, Pretty annoyed by the fact that the, my pedal doesn't work. Reason. Let me shut down this guy. Otherwise, he, he will change my my settings. All right there. Well, you've seen these things already. Market E2. Oh, I'm sorry, GBU12. Well, well, does not even need to set the quantity, but you know, just for the sake of clarity, I always set it. You know, you never know. To ground mode. Then what else do I need? Slow there. Meanwhile, master I'm on, earth to ground. So, if the lantern is ready in what, 30 seconds, you're ready to deliver. So it's pretty, it's yeah, pretty quite, quite fast thing. Okay, there is. Oops. 
the way. Okay. This is our Shilka. Still too far away, is it? Yeah, we are still uh, 13 miles. Are you just hovering over the top, keep hitting point track and waiting till it picks it up? Um, no, I just I haven't pressed anything yet. I'm just moving it to follow the target. At some point I will press... Uh, now I'm still in area mode. I'm not sure if point is automatic, no, I don't think so. So we are 10 miles away, you don't see anything. I mean, you can... Unfortunately, this has, I mean, look at the bushes, they look like exactly as the Shilka, even if we are yeah. in flare mode. So that's the, that's a problem. Uh, the low definition is, is even a bigger problem because of DCS. Alright, no, got it. Uh, did you select that or did it auto? No, I did it by myself. Alright. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Minor detail, if you don't press the full action, it doesn't work. So now to, I need to turn left a little bit. Did I forget something? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Time to release 30, sec 30 seconds. Ah, okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, probably since it's a GBU, I don't even have to be very precise, actually. No. So, at some point, I'm gonna... So, in this case, if you fly by yourself, you can set up the auto laser. I never did it, because I can normally arm the rear. If you set the auto laser on... Okay, it stores away. Nope, why not? I thought I heard it go clunk. No, but I don't see the bomb going. Stand by. Uh, well, if I press F6, I don't see any bomb. And they're all there. Yeah, no, you're right. I thought I heard a clunk. You have to ground mode. I'm in to ground mode. Hot trigger is on. Master arm is on. Why is it not releasing? I don't know. Oh, interesting. Uh, right. I don't understand. The tracking's pretty good, though. Yeah, no, the tracking is fine. I think it would probably work. No, no, it works. Um, I did it with Entropy, and unless the target is very fast, we haven't had any issues at all. I'm just wondering what did I forget as a pilot. Master Ram is on. We are in air to ground. I, I can't see anything. That's annoying. I'm in manual mode. Uh, stations are selected. Well, except for the mechanical fuse, but it's not really a big deal. GBU 12 is selected. I have no idea. Also, because the trigger is off, so all the time I press the button. Try try releasing now, just randomly. No, it's not releasing anything. You know, even my paddle is not working, so probably this is DCS doing weird stuff. Okay. Because, let me check, just controls. Yeah, it's to release, it's set. And I have a, a trigger all the time, so technically it should go. I don't know, this is DCS doing weird stuff, I'm afraid. Okay, no worries. Well, anyway, you see the pattern. I get the idea, and if the tracking looked good, I reckon it would have hit. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, quite intuitive. The problem is that you need probably one, two, three, four, four uh, ways heads to use it on top of. Well, I've got. If I can, yeah, I've got one, two, yeah, modifier or something like that, probably. Would the Warthog's great. got four hats, one of which is a five-way. So I've got everything I need on there. I just need to figure out how I'm gonna share it with the HCU. Well, NCU, you, you just the trigger, that's it. I don't know... Well, I've got loads of other stuff set on there. I've got countermeasures on there. I've got, um, yeah, var various flips between different things. Yeah, that's why I build my panel layer, like, immediately. Yeah, exactly. Places, so the number of buttons they are required as a I build my own stuff. Uh, what yeah. about the throttle? Well, yeah, I'm going to have to work it out. I'm going to have to... S I'm, I'm probably going to see what... Well, I was just going to open it now and see when Charlie's guide what... What he's done. Um, I think if you have a modifier, complete modifier, you could just switch. Uh, well, I mean, think about it. The only yeah, modifier button, is definitely an option. Yeah, the only button that you actually, the only add that you need quite often is the slew. 
everything else you can use even I won't say the keyboard but you know separate targets because everything else you don't really use that much uh, the only thing that is constantly used is normally the slewing because if you if you don't have a target you keep looking around you keep moving um, you know slewing the lantern to a waypoint is something that you do yeah a couple of times not really that often yeah I mean the thing is a lot of those controls are very um well they're they're very, they're the same as what you use on the in the warthog um and I want to make them the same so i I know you know because they've got loads of muscle memory already in there for you know changing waypoints changing between white hot and you know all of those sort of things are all um thinking if you if you have a if the uh warthog has a like full modifier that changes every setting. It's possible. I can set one up. I just need to figure out which one I want to use. Yeah, you can use, for example, on my panels, I always uh, wire a uh, master switch. Basically, for example, my Rio control panel, just the Rio part, has 110 buttons. Because there are 50 buttons, and then I flip the switch, and everything doubles up. Right. So it's 50, and it becomes actually more than 55, I think. 56. Even the encoders, they double up. So every encoder works f as 5 buttons each. Then it becomes 10. Uh, if the water gets something similar, maybe on the target. Worst case scenario, uh, you can just switch uh, switch modes. Maybe you can keep the NC because technically, what you can do is stay in air to air, releasing a Fox Three while you're lazing for someone else. That's what yeah. you can actually do it because since they are not that interface together, they're not a single yeah, thing. Yeah, they're running completely separately. Yeah. You just have to press a button to laze. Meanwhile, you can do air to air. You can have the radar and radar mode in air to air and everything else in air to air. Yeah. But most of the time, you won't use the the NCU in uh, Earth to Ground anyway. No, yeah, okay. You just have to think about it a bit. Yeah, I'm going to try and set it up as close to the Warhog as possible. Okay, Claren, that was awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, no worries. Anything else that we should go have a look at? I'm out of time actually. So That's fine. Well, we'll maybe for time. next time, if you have any ideas, yeah. just let me know. Well, I, yeah, it's definitely. I think this, the you know, lantern stuff, it's so similar to the warthog. I don't have a problem with it. It's um. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, you've seen it, and yeah, you're really familiar yeah. with the uh, it and it's pretty little. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the air to air stuff, I'm still. Yeah, I need to read the manual. That's what I need to do next. <laughs> so I will read manual. the manual next. <laughs> Is there any particular bits of the manual I should focus on? No, I already like all of it like, a few times. So I read all of it first. If you read the pilot okay. already, just keep it. Then, uh, what I did, for example, when I was figuring out w w the buttons, was just looking at every single bit of the cockpit, um, where it is and what it does. So you have to, I opened two tabs of the manual. In one, there was the cockpit laid out, and the other one, there was actually the details of the function. Right, okay, yeah. But for example, stuff like the uh, cryptography, just keep it at the moment. The IFF is not implemented. So at the moment what, you, you say the cartography? Uh, cryptography. Of cryptography, got you, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, buddy. No worries. Any Appreciate it. A bummer that it And, and it's good that you've recorded this and go back and reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, a, I'm just cool. annoyed because the, the my pedal is not working at the moment. The pedal no, is a great thing for the affection, so you keep lazing while you have and your end totally free. And yeah. otherwise it's not working. And the last bomb was fine. I mean, everything was set. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either, man. All right, bub. I'm going to go. Right. Thanks Catch very much. Yeah, cheers. All right. See ya.